shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. What I want you to take note of is precious seed. Precious seed. When you sow the precious seed, doubtless you come again with rejoicing and bringing in the sheaves. Amen? Yeah. God wants us to sow what is precious to us. Sometimes we don't get that. Sometimes we think, well, I'll let the offering plate pass me by, or I won't give this to God, or I'll hold this back from God. And, and you know who you're really hurting? You're not hurting God. You're hurting yourself. Amen. See, God is trying to get you to fully trust in Him. He's trying to get beyond what you possess in materialistic things because heaven and earth shall pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But we are going, amen, and belonging even now to a kingdom that has no end. We are serving a God that has everything in abundance. You can't give Him nothing. Amen. So why would He want us to give? Well, the Bible says, give and it shall be given. Amen. Amen. It's a key to unlock the storehouse of heaven. Can somebody praise the Lord? Amen. Now, it's hard to get folks to shout on this. Years ago when you preached this, people would be shouting all over the church because everybody's preaching that prosperity message. I'm not preaching a, a prosperity message. I'm preaching the fact uh, that if you want to be blessed, amen, you must adhere to the eternal word of the living God. Amen. There is no exemption for anyone. God wants everyone to trust them, him, amen, and he wants to be able to bless you abundantly, but he requires the precious thing. Abraham offered that which was most precious to him. What did he offer? He offered his son Isaac. Well, he had Ishmael, but God didn't want Ishmael. Why? Because Ishmael was not the precious child. The precious child was Isaac. And he loved Ishmael, but he loved Isaac more. He knew that Isaac was that promised precious child. Amen. And God said, Abraham, sacrifice that precious thing. Amen? Uh, Abraham loved God enough that he took that boy up that mountain to sacrifice him. Unbeknown to Abraham, coming on the other side of the mountain, is a ram that's going to be caught in the bush and cause Abraham to get his child back. That most precious thing, he was going to return to him. Not only return to him, but his descendants were going to be like the stars of the sky, like the sand on the seashores. He was going to multiply generation after generation after generation because Abraham was a friend of God and was not afraid to offer that precious thing. You know what God wanted? He didn't want Isaac per se. He wanted Abraham. Yeah. Amen. He didn't want anything becoming, uh, coming between him and Abraham. You find in 1 Kings 17, 13, the widow, the man of God, comes to her and says, Look, I want you to make me a little cake. Yeah. And she said, Well, I just got enough. Yeah. So you need to listen to this. I just got enough for me and my boy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gathering a few sticks. I got a little bit of meal, a little bit of oil, and I'm going to make a little cake. And boy, and me's going to eat it, and then we're going to lay down and die. We'll get it up. We're done. We're finished. We've come into a famine. We don't have any ways, uh, any matter, any means uh, to make ends meet. And when we think the ends are going to meet, somebody moves the ends. Mm -hmm. Now you'd have got mad at this man of God too. Because this man of God said, good idea about making that little cake. But bring me one first. Come on. 
Amen. That was precious to that woman. Mm -hmm. The most precious thing she had because that stood between life and death for her only son. Amen. But she's willing and ready to obey the man of God. Mm -hmm. Look around you this morning. How many people do you think could have been obedient to God and been in the house of God? Many, many, many texts me said, I'll be there. But they no shows. See, you are people of God that need to dedicate fully and completely to God. It's not just about your money. It's about your precious thing. Sometimes it's your precious time. Amen. Sometimes it's your precious choices you make. Yeah, I know. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes it's getting everything that's clouding your vision of heaven and God out of the way and doing what God has called you to do. Amen. 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 amen? Yeah. Sometimes it's not all those things that's going to get you shouting amen and going to wake you up in the morning and, and just bless you to where you can't even speak hardly amen because the sun's come up. It's a beautiful day. There's nothing going to trouble you or bother you, but let me assure you, the devil's all always going to trouble you but the thing is when you've given God your most precious thing which is your commitment to him in everything God is there with you in anything I can't hear you this morning you sitting around wondering when the service is going to be over others are sitting around wondering who I can talk about today and others are sitting around wondering what's he getting to and some are saying I know he's talking about me because I'm stingy as I can be. Amen. Hell's going to be full of stingy folks. Untrusting folks. Some of you don't believe that? Well, you better read in the book of Revelation. The unbeliever. Yeah. Hello. Come on. Along with the fearful. I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid if I give a little something to God, I won't have nothing left to have fun. Folks, where do you see in the Bible where you're supposed to be having fun? You are here as ambassadors to Christ. Amen. Sometimes your children will have to go without. I've been in that place where I couldn't buy my children Christmas. But somebody else stepped up because I was faithful to God and said those kids are getting a Christmas and they bought it. They were more able than me because I had quit my job. I had quit everything that brought an income to me and trusted God, amen, to direct my path. I want to tell you today and tell you fully and honestly, just totally and completely trust God, you're never going to get what I'm preaching this morning. Amen. Bring me that little cake first. That old sorry preacher wants my money. I don't want your money. I had people out here working yesterday. Guess who paid them? I paid them out of my pocket. I didn't ask you to pay them. This is church property. I pay them. I often do that. The, the children I had out here were scared. A preacher in the church got them all upset and afraid. Julian said, man, I heard about it. I, I don't know, you know. So I heard Charles talk about that crawl space. <laughs> <laughs> I had them all down in the crawl space, crawling around. Yeah, hey, man. He said, <laughs> he said, I've heard about that place. I don't know if I want that place or not. <laughs> but they all went down there. Julian, Ryan, and Bailey went down there and crawled around like rats in a sewer age, man, come out. They were so filthy, they hosed each other off. <laughs> they even hosed each other off. I had mud all over the blacktop up there where they hosed each other down. <laughs> Amen. Now, maybe he ain't never been in a situation like that before. And the first cracker out the box, he got a big old brown streak on him. And he said, Grandpa, I said, yeah. He said, can you hand me some water or something to get this off from me? I said, son, you're going to have that all over you before you get out of there. <laughs> leave that on there. That's a mark of a worksman. Amen. Just leave it on. Because you're going to be worse than that when you come out that place. Come out. And hope to God I don't screw that top down to where you can't get out. Amen. <laughs> but they finished the job. And that was precious to me. Amen. Yeah. They never asked 
asked me to pay them. Never asked me to do anything. They just came because they had a good heart. Amen. And wanted to offer the precious things. What do you mean, Pastor? It was precious time yeah. that they took away from their activities, their families, and everything else. And young people today, it's hard to get them to do anything. Amen. Unless it's on the phone. <laughs> or a game. Or something like that. But God requires the precious thing. Yeah. That woman gave the most precious thing she had. That little bit of bread. And then God blessed her back abundantly. God blessed Abraham abundantly. With sons and daughters that we can't even count. Amen. Amen. And here we, we, we know in the word of God that there was a widow woman. Amen. And that widow woman, it says in Mark 12, 41 through 44, gave two small copper coins worth only a few cents. It's not the amount. It's how precious it is Amen. to you. Yes. See, that's all she had, Brother right. Charles. Because Jesus stood by the offering box. Yeah. And rich folks came and they threw in money that was plenty. And she came. Can you imagine it's the only thing she's got? Only thing she has left from having nothing. I don't imagine today that it was easy for her to drop that in the box. The Bible says that she threw it in the box. That means she had to get rid of it quick before she changed her mind. But she gave that which was precious to her. See, some of you come to church and you, you tell me all these reasons how you don't have any money to give. You just can't afford to give. You cannot afford not to. Amen. Amen. See, when the Bible tells you to pay tithes, that's exactly what it means. It means to pay tithes. It doesn't mean pay tithes when you want to, when you think you should, amen, or when things are going real good for you, or when you've got an abundance. It means pay tithes, 10% of your income, because God expects it, amen, so that He can open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you cannot contain, because it's a precious thing to let go of that, uh, amen, which you don't know if you're going to get any more of it or not. Because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. Right. Amen. Sometimes I preach that I'm blessed. And I shouldn't probably do that. Because then folks think you got blessed just because, you know, you, you pastor a church. Let me tell you something. That's not the reason I'm blessed. Reason I'm blessed is because I've always trusted God. Amen. It is never a chore for me to write ties out and above ties. Mm -hmm. Always done it. Yeah. I believe in it. It's a principle that God has placed in the Word, and I know it works. Amen. If you want to be successful in anything you do, do you think multi billionaires, uh, some of them not even saved, uh, use the same principle and give some of them 90% uh, of their money to charities uh, because that's how they got rich in the first place uh, was by not holding everything but giving what God had blessed them with. Amen. Message today, many of you say, I don't know how you do it, Pastor. I do it the same way everybody else does it. Sister, I drove old vehicles. I don't even think they broke in until they got 150,000 miles on them. Amen. The elders and preachers one time told me, said, Pastor, get yourself a new car. I said, Man, I don't know. They said, Get a new Jaguar. No oh, man. So I wouldn't got me an escape. Yes. Yellow, looked like a banana. <laughs> it wasn't new. It said on the lot of it had a few miles on it, but I drove it. And I drove that bad boy till the wheels almost come off from it. Amen. 
See, it's, it's not about stuff, amen. It's not about having so much stuff. That's where they found Saul, yeah. hid amongst the stuff. Yeah. It's about distributing stuff, amen, that God has blessed you with yeah. so that you can bless others with the same yeah. thing. Amen. Yeah. Well, Pastor, I got bills. So do I. Some folks think the pastor don't have bills. But I pay taxes. So do I. Yeah. Ooh. Every three months, yeah. they come and get it right out of my checking account. Mm -hmm. And every year, I give them a bunch before they ever dip into my checking account. So we all do that. Mm -hmm. All the pastors, sometimes we got to go to the doctor. So do we. Mm -hmm. But we got to buy gas. And gas went up. Hey, it went up for me too. Amen. Hello, get gas, buddy. Find out where's the cheapest. I do. I ain't going to give nobody no more amen for the gas than I have to. Amen. I'm just like you. Amen. I want, I want to save. I want to be blessed. I want to give mostly. And if I don't have it, I won't be able to give it. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I don't give it, I won't have it. Amen. 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 So we say, you know, well, I can't do it. How, how, how is it that widow women can do it? Mm -hmm. On a measly small income, and some of you say, I, I, I just, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Why? See, I never pin nobody down and make them feel like, you know, that they can't do anything because I want them to know they can do something. Yeah. And some people, when they stop, they stop giving everything or anything. Come on. Bucket pass and they look at it. Why that's going to fill it. <laughs> Hello. Used to in the old days they tell you at least touch the basket. <laughs> Amen. And faith the next time you touch it you'll drop something in it. Amen. 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 Boys, it's tight up in here. Come on, preacher. <laughs> Pastor, I don't know if I'll be back. Well, I don't know if we need you back. Come on, preach. Hey, man, I'm so tired of everybody getting offended about every little thing Come on. that I preach. Preach it, Come on. Hey, man, you still, Brother Steve, I beg them back. Hey, man, cry over them. Uh, hallelujah, just lay on the floor, squall and ball. I ain't doing that no more, hey, man. If you don't want to be here, then by all means, just go someplace else and worry the hair off that pastor's head. Come on, preach it. You done did it to me, you might as well do it to somebody else. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. But we think, you know, I'm exempt. No, you're not exempt. And it doesn't make any difference if things are going exactly like you want them to go. Amen? Amen. You still got to have faith. Amen. Amen. When I fell down those stairs and they said, look, you got a mass on your liver. My brother just died of liver cancer. You think the devil didn't sit on my shoulder and tell me you're going to die? He told me that laying on the couch before I ever fell down the stairs. He told me I was going to die because of my liver. Come on. Then he knocked me off that ladder. Somebody said, can the devil do that? The devil do a lot of things. Amen. He can. Just, he can only go so far. And then God puts the brakes on him. Yeah. But see, I need to build that faith back. Come on. I need to build that faith back. So now I'm dealing with being busted up all over my body. People have died from the same injuries and even less injuries than what I had. But I had to keep the faith. Amen. I had to keep the faith. So I'm fighting this thing that they're telling me. You know, I got this mass on my liver. My phone rings. And the doctor calls me, said, you got to get in here. I'm going to send you to the oncologist. I said, for what? He said, you got a mass on your lung. We think it's cancer. I said, you're a lying devil. <laughs> I'm fighting this liver situation. Now you're telling me I got a lung situation. I got a Jesus situation. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give him the precious thing. Amen. I 
gave him my all. Hallelujah. I want to serve him to the best of my ability. When he's ready to take me, I'm ready to go, but I'm not going, amen, until he's ready to receive me. Can amen. somebody amen. praise the Lord? Amen. amen. Being saved, that's been some years ago, and I'm standing here this morning preaching to you because of the fact, amen, God healed me. Yes. God kept me. Now, I got bills from the doctors, I think a year or a year and a half later. Still got them. I, I, according to all the x-rays I paid, I, I should turn the lights off and I should glow. Because <laughs> I never paid so many x-ray bills in all my entire life. I should just be glowing right now. So when they talk to me hey, at the dentist's office or wherever I'm going, they say, we need to do an x-ray. I say, I already got enough. Just look. Y'all be able to see through me. Hey, Amen. Turn the light off. Hallelujah. Get a good glance because I don't want no more x-rays. But, but you pay those bills. I mean, you don't have bills. Yes, I do. Like everybody else. But God wants the precious thing from us all. Yes. And I would never ask anyone to do something I wouldn't do myself. Amen. Amen. We were out there yesterday. Steve Colbert told us, that, Pastor, leave that stuff alone. He's 69. He always reminds me how old I am. <laughs> 69 years old. I'm going to pick up a stick one time. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. I picked up those big heavy bags and that big old heavy steel and stuff and carried it down there, amen. And I'm not going to ask people to do something I'm unwilling to do. I'm going to do what I ask you to do. See, I learned that in the military. As one of the non-commissioned officers, I had a lot of men under me. And I wouldn't ask them to do something I wasn't willing to do myself. Amen. amen? And that's the way you got to be. I can't stand up here and tell you to do something I'm unwilling to do. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you to believe about healing, amen. Somebody preached not long ago, ah, it's a lot easier for me to pray for you uh, than it is for me to pray for you, myself. You know why? Because you ain't got it. Uh -huh. <laughs> amen. You're like one sick. Uh -huh. Difference between major surgery and minor surgery, amen. It's minor when it's on you, but it's major when it's on me. Yeah. <laughs> Same surgery. <laughs> oh, yes, a lot easier. Because, see, it's not you. Right. But until you're able to pray, amen, and believe God for yourself, how in the world are you going to believe God for anybody else? Amen. Amen. Until you, amen, amen, trust God with all your heart, and stop leaning to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge it. How many of you believe the Bible? Amen. I believe the Bible, yes, I believe the Bible. I'm just not going to obey the Bible. Come on. You get a darn preacher about that, I ain't going to listen to that. Well, the Bible says bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Yes, it does. That can, so there can be meat yes, in my house. Yes, my And it's the only place in the Word of God that God says, prove me. Yes. <laughs> prove me. So you got to prove God by giving the precious thing. And most of the time, that precious thing is something we hold real dear and real tight. Amen. It was Isaac. It was that morsel of bread. It was that copper penny. Amen. It was things that people didn't want to let go of, uh, but they had to because they had to trust God uh, with all their heart, soul, and mind. Uh, they had to love God more than they loved themselves, uh, more than they loved their families, uh, more than they loved anyone else. Uh, they had to put God first. Yeah. How many of you want joy? Yeah. Here it is. J. Jesus first. Amen. O. Others next. Why? You last. Hello. Mm -hmm. See, when you're talking about I can't, but then you're flooding Facebook with things that you are, and then coming to church and you can't. If I was you, I wouldn't put it on Facebook. So the pastor could see it. Because I'm looking at <laughs> I'm seeing. Well, I just 
can't do it. Can't never did do a thing. Come on. And we don't need a church full of can'ts. Yes, come on. We need a church full of saints. Amen. Amen. That know and realize and recognize I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. Amen. I'm going to leave you with this. Here's what most people do here at Miracle Temple. Not all. Thank God for the precious ones. Amen. If you're one of them, I'm thanking God for you. Amen. If you're one of those going to leave the church today and, and eat me for lunch, <laughs> I'm going to be the main topic at your dinner table. Then I ain't including you. <laughs> but you're one of the precious ones. Amen. You, you want to be obedient to God. Amen. See, what we have is people that come to church sometimes you do everything you can for them and their family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You give them that precious thing out of your wallet mm -hmm. to help them. Others give them food to eat and transportation to help them. And you know what they do? I ain't coming to church no more. Yeah. Why? Because I got all I need. Mm -hmm. Until you need it again. Yes. But see, I, I've come to the point, amen, where I realize I can't help you yeah. if you won't help yourself. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. And I want to help you. And I realize my help cometh from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. amen. Yes. Your help cometh from the Lord. Amen. A uh, preacher friend of mine said, and I told him about it Sunday, I forgot he was the one who told me about it. He said, uh, some of his members came up and said, brother, I'm going to be blessed just like you. He said, well, let's pray. He said, God gave them two or three jobs just like you gave me. <laughs> Hello. Amen. Wait, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. I don't want to work. I just want to get. Come on. See, but the Bible principle is you ain't getting till you give. That's right. Amen. Prove me, says the Lord. And I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you cannot contain. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? I don't know how many people this church has helped, but it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's not just me, that's you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's you. That's us sending money to missionaries. Mm -hmm. uh, we got missionaries right now texting and, and warning their finances. Amen. We ain't sent it yet. You know, we're, we're waiting. We're going to get it done. You know, we got insurance bills coming due. Thank God that God gave me favor. Come on, Amen. 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 The insurance that canceled us, the agent. I called him. I said, I don't want to pay this $5,000 for this insurance. He said, let me see what I can do. Now, he's a brother of the Lord. He come back with more insurance on all the property and all the buildings on the property, more than we were, had before. And he said, I'm going to do it. I think I can get it done for $2,600. Almost half, amen. Then I saved about $1,000 on my car insurance. Then I saved more money on another policy amen. by grouping them all together. Amen? amen. So God is good. But you just got to find and lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge Him. Amen. Let Him direct your path. You will find a way where you will save. You'll be blessed. Amen. You'll be a giver instead of a getter all the time. Amen. 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 See me. I was raised, and my wife sometimes said, I, you know, maybe they shouldn't have done that when they, they raised them children. I'll tell you, I, my dad wasn't the greatest dad in the world. He wasn't. He was an alcoholic. He, he beat on us and shot through the house and everything else. He, he, was, a, he was pretty sad. Yeah. Amen. But one thing he did teach us, he taught us work at us. He didn't miss work. <clears throat> when he fell into an acid tank, about 90% of his body burned. Jumped out of the building window. The only thing that saved his life, a hook caught him. 
He was walking down the street, skin dripping off from him. As soon as he got out of the hospital, he went back to work. He never sued them, never wanted a dime from them. He just wanted his job. He got messed up again. I remember. I don't know if Sister Mary, she's probably married then, not at the house, but I remember them picking him up in a station wagon, putting him on a stretcher, putting him in the station wagon, and carrying him to Stoffer Chemical so that they wouldn't have a lost time accident. But Daddy gladly got on that stretcher. Amen. It's like the picture I put on Facebook one time about the song leader in the hospital, all tied up and, amen, bound to, got cast on the legs and feet, and I got the microphone in front of him saying, go ahead and sing. <laughs> sing. <laughs> amen. We never were allowed to have excuses. When I told my dad I was sick, amen, he kicked me in behind and said, that's in your head. Mm -hmm. Hello. Well, my stomach was hurting, not my head. Yeah. But then my head didn't hurt more than my stomach, so I was all right. Oh, God. Amen. Yeah. Some of you were raised that way. Uh -huh. Daddy got your ear, and then it goes nicotine up in your ear. What kind of deal is that? But you went ahead and said, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, look like you've been smoking, but you're all right. <laughs> we were taught that. Sometimes we're too big of babies. Amen. Amen. We let every little obstacle defeat us. Amen. And then when something big comes, like that mountain that you should be able to speak to, you speak to it and it doesn't move. You know what the Bible says, Brother Steve? It should obey you. It yeah. should obey you. But it didn't. That's right. Why? Because you didn't believe it. Because it said if a man would speak and doubt it not in his heart, if you doubt, you're not going to receive. Right. The Bible says here, if you sow that precious seed, doubtless you will come again bringing the sheaves with you. Amen. Amen. 